Hi everyone, I'm Malika Singhania and welcome to my TEDx talk. Today I'm going to talk about learning to embrace. So when my friends and even my kids heard my topic, they laughed and asked me, what are you going to talk about? Your life seems so easy and glamorous. While from the outside my life does seem easy and glamorous and to be honest I get fooled by it myself sometimes. From the inside, this topic couldn't have been more appropriate for me. In fact, I'd go as far as saying that this topic has defined my life. Learning to embrace my highs, my lows, my sorrows, my insecurities and eventually myself has brought me to where I am today. So come with me and get an insider's view. So as young as I can remember, I think I was five or six, I remember I always wanted to be in front of the camera. I don't know what it was. Maybe it was because I wanted to be famous or to leave a mark in society or to be creative in that way. But I knew that that's what I wanted to do. But I was born in a Marwadi family. And now most of you would know that Marwadi families are known to be a part of the business circles. While my family is extremely modern and they've never stopped me from doing anything, I found it hard to voice my desires. I also honestly didn't think they'd have the resources to help me out. I also grew up in the time of Paris Hilton. Which of y'all are old like me and have grown up in the 1990s and 2000s? Oh my God, it was such a hard time to grow up in. It was a time when every single magazine cover model, every celebrity, every socialite, influencer, everyone was stickly skinned. Do you remember that time? It was horrible. Some of them looked gorgeous because they were naturally skinny. Some of them looked really not so nice. But what it did was that it brainwashed girls like me to believe that that's normal. It brainwashed girls like me to believe that to be a part of the entertainment industry, you had to be like that to fit in. Now I had a problem. As I was entering my teenage years, my appetite for food along with my waistline was, I want to say gradually, but quickly increasing. My body was transforming in ways in which I thought I had absolutely no control over. Worse still, I was surrounded by people who made sure to make me feel that if I didn't look a certain way or fit a certain size, I wasn't worthy of being accepted. I used to wake up as a teenager at 13 or 14 every single day and check my weight on the weighing scale. And that number I'd see would define my mood and would also really kill a part of my soul. This led me to a, a phase of crazy diets. I literally did every freakish diet on the book. I did the white diet where you only eat white food. I did the green diet. I did, I did the watermelon diet. I did the apple diet. Let's just say I hated food and food hated me right back and we mutually decided to not see each other as much as possible. So you can imagine how that went. The other thing that I had a very toxic relationship with was working out. Now people work out once a day to get fit. I would sometimes work out three times a day to look frail, which was obviously terrible for my immunity. Working out was so important for me that I designed my entire day around it. Nothing else was more important to me. I would cancel plans. I would not meet friends. It was only about when I could work out, even if it meant the only time it was, was at 12.30 at night post dinner. So because of working out, I slowly became a recluse. I started losing my social life. I lost my personality. I lost my zest for life, which was the worst. And I lost a few friends too. Who wants to hang out with this weird person who's not eating and only talking about losing weight? It's not fun. And then one day, magic happened, or that's what I thought it was. I looked at the scale and, oh my God, it was a number that I've never seen before and thankfully never seen after. I was a size double or maybe even a triple zero. I thought I'd done it. All my hard work had paid off. But guess what? All those people who derided me for being fat were now calling me ugly. They were all calling me a bag of bones. They were concerned about my well-being. They were asking my parents, is she okay? Is something going on? I just was aghast. I was so confused as a young teenager. I didn't know what happened. Everything I'd worked for was this. And I finally attained it and no one was happy. I got stuck in this vicious cycle where I didn't know where to go next. I couldn't go back to being fat, but I wasn't being loved and accepted like this either. 
after seven years of putting my body, my mind, my soul through toxicity, through this abuse, one day I was just fed up. I was just tired. And I sat down and thought about it. I realized this was never about food. This was about me seeking validation from others. The day I realized that, something in my mind flipped and I decided to make certain changes in my life to change my life. I decided I'm not going to get self-value from that weight value that I see on the scale. I'm not going to derive self-worth by sizing myself up with every wonderful person that I see. I'm going to get up in the, and look at myself in the mirror every morning and find myself beautiful and love myself no matter how many gulab jamuns I ate the day before. I'm going to eventually be grateful for this body that has supported me through this nonsense of seven years and that has not given up on me. And lastly, I'm going to give up my whole and sole purpose in life and I didn't know what I was going to do with the rest of the day because I did nothing but work out. But it was a purpose that wasn't suiting me anymore and it was time to go. And guess what happened? As my relationship with my food, my workouts, my body image changed, my self-worth increased too. And I realized that by being smart and by being disciplined and by being honest to yourself, everything falls into place. It's true, only when you resign to the universe does the universe give you exactly what you wanted. So when people say that I'm blessed because I don't work out, I wake up in the morning looking like this, I eat french fries and cheeseburgers, and of course, like I told you all, I'm very disciplined about it. I think I am blessed. I'm blessed for that horrible toxic journey that I went through, but I'm blessed because it truly taught me how to embrace myself, my soul, my body, my self-worth, and not look for validation on those fronts from others. My second lesson came when I was applying to colleges. Now, I went to a very fancy high school with very surrounded by very rich kids. So I just assumed I'd go to one of these uber luxurious universities where we'd all do spring break together and spend New Year's together. My older sister went to a private college as well. So I just thought that's the rite of passage. But here's the thing. I got my application results and I got into some mediocre private colleges and some mediocre public colleges. Now, my dad didn't think it was worth spending three times the fees to send me to a mediocre private college when I'd get the similar education in a UT Austin, which is a public college. Today, I agree with him. But at that time, I was mortified. I was so embarrassed. I didn't know how to tell my friends. I thought they'll think I wasn't as well to do as them. I thought they think that my parents didn't think I was worthy enough to be sent to a private college and to spend all that money on me. I was so upset, I fought with my parents for two weeks, didn't talk to them. Seeing this, my dad told me that if I worked hard, he promised to transfer me to a top 10 private college if I got in. So the achiever in me decided to go to UT Austin with one single mission, which was to transfer. But here's the thing. I entered UT Austin and I loved it. My mind was blown away. It was the college that dreams are made of. Because it was a public college and there were 50,000 students, there were so many amenities to avail of. While the academics were engaging, they weren't that rigorous, which gave us time to do so many other things. I made so many amazing friends. The weather was just beautiful. We'd go boating and sailing into the beach on the weekends. The fun and nurturing environment in the university really helped me hone my full potential. It helped me develop the personality that I have today. And it also showed me a glimmer of a route of the career that I wanted in front of the camera because the course that I took was exactly that. Everyone asked me, why do you even still want to transfer? I actually didn't have an answer other than the fact that there was this really silly adamancy and stubbornness in me which somewhere believed that the rank of my college would prove my sense of self-value, that the status of a public or a private college would prove my sense of self-worth. So I applied and I got in. I got into Northwestern University, which is a number seven private college in the US. I was so elated, I'd finally done it, I couldn't believe it. I was so excited that I didn't even check anything about Northwestern. And I showed up there with my bags. And while Northwestern is a prolific college, it's not a university meant for me. 
I don't do well in the cold. In fact, I feel pretty cold even in an air-conditioned room in India. And Northwestern is in Chicago, which falls to minus 40 degrees in the winter. Can you imagine that? It's horrible. Because I was a transfer student, I found it really hard to make friends because everyone had already made their friends. I found the academics so, so grueling and hard. I had to work 10 times as hard to do as well as I did in UT. The lack of fun and engagement and the terrible weather made me miserable. Today, I laugh and tell my kids that those years were the penance in my life. But you know what? They taught me a lot. They taught me that yet again, I need to stop looking for validation externally. They taught me that I need to stop chasing ranks and badges of honor because truly you need to dive within and see what works for you. You need to listen to your inner voice and your inner truth and that's going to guide you. I realized that in life, there are so many things that look glamorous, that look shiny and everyone's like, go there. That looks so good. That's for you. You should do that. But not necessarily. Actually, only you know what works for you and only you know what's truly going to give you fulfillment and happiness, even if it doesn't look as good. And that's exactly what my college experience taught me. It taught me to embrace my truth. It taught me to embrace what I believe is best for myself. All of those lessons have come in handy to me today. And I decided that when I got uh, graduated from college, I got married and had two kids within the first five years. Today, I think that's, oh my God, crazy. I thought my career was a distant dream. I thought there's no way I can ever be in front of the camera. But that spark was alive to be in the media industry. So I worked from behind the camera. I wrote eight shopping guides for Times of India. I had a podcast. I had a, a weekly column with a very big newspaper in Bombay. I ran and sold an e-commerce fashion venture after three years. But even though I was successful, somewhere I lacked getting gratification. Maybe it's because I didn't do what I was truly passionate about. So I took a five-year work sabbatical to figure what I wanted to do next. That's when my friends told me, Malika, why don't you become a fashion influencer? It's totally up your alley. I was aghast. I completely shot it down. I was petrified. I was like, are you crazy? There's no way I can do this. What will my teenage sons think? What will my in-laws think? What will my friends think? I wonder if entering this space as a 40-year-old, would it even be possible for me to compete with the gorgeous 20-year-olds that are in it already? I also wasn't on Instagram. I was on Facebook. So I knew nothing about the platform. And I was thinking to myself, here's the deal. I'm going to enter this platform and then figure it out and take the risk of failing in front of everyone's eyes publicly. And that's when all my previous lessons came to me. And I told myself, it's either now or never. This has always been your passion. And if you don't pursue it now, you're going to regret it forever. And that is the day, 2nd December, two years ago. I decided to embrace my dreams, my passions, my desire to be in front of the camera. And somewhere, that honesty translated on screen. And just like my baseline didn't grow gradually and fairly quickly, so did my career, as least expected. I truly believe that I was in a space which works on validation. It's all about likes, shares, comments. But the reason I succeeded was because I didn't care. I wasn't looking for validation from people. I don't care what someone thinks I should wear, what I'm looking, uh, looking like, what I'm not looking good in, which brands I should tie up with. I don't care. I know that somewhere, if I work hard and smart and with discipline, I will find a way to showcase my unique self on screen. And you know what? That's what people love the most about my content. I don't follow trends. I don't follow people. I do what's true to me. I feel like today, finally, my authentic self has won. I've realized that there's no formula to doing anything in life. So you should stop chasing what other people are doing and you should do what's true to you. I've realized that there's no right or wrong to getting successful. So stop looking for that validation from others. Let's all own ourselves today and every day. And only when we embrace ourselves, our insecurities, our victories, and eventually our truth, that is the day that it will become 
our superpower and we can make all our dreams come true. Thank you.